Like most people these days, you might have thought COVID-19 or coronavirus was scary, right? Well, hold on to your hats because we're about to dive into a world of diseases that make the coronavirus look like a mild cold. We're talking about flesh-eating bacteria, blood-soaked viruses, and plagues that wiped out entire civilizations. So get ready to meet the seven most terrifying diseases in history. Think of your brain turning into a sponge riddled with holes. That's the terrifying reality of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, or CJD, a brain-eating nightmare that causes dementia, memory loss, and eventually, death. But hold on, things get even weirder. Bovine spongy form. Encephalopathy, or BSE, better known as mad cow disease, is CJD's evil twin, hitting cattle hard. Think of it as a brain meltdown, turning their brains and spinal cords into mush. The origin of BSE is still a mystery, but scientists discovered a horrifying truth. Feeding dead cows to live cows in the form of meat and bone meal triggered a massive BSE epidemic across Europe. This led to a new variant of CJD, called New Variant creutzfeldt jakob Disease, or NVCDJ, which jumped from cows to humans who ate infected beef. And here's the kicker. NVCDJ has a 100% mortality rate. Over 170 people worldwide have succumbed to this brain-eating disease. It's a stark reminder that what we eat can have deadly consequences. But it gets even creepier. CJD is easily spread through consuming infected animals or gulp people. This explains why it's prevalent in certain Papua New Guinea tribes with a history of cannibalism. The scariest part? Infected cows can be slaughtered and consumed before showing any symptoms. So that juicy burger you're craving? It could be a ticking time bomb. Now, all the vegetarians out there are probably giving themselves a high five. But hey, beef is just so darn delicious. Imagine this. You're in a car accident, a minor scrape on your hand. No big deal, right? Wrong. You could have just been infected with a microscopic monster, necrotizing fasciitis, the flesh-eating bacteria. This isn't your average infection. It's a silent killer, spreading like wildfire under your skin. You might not even notice at first, but soon, your body starts to betray you, vomiting, pus oozing from the wound, skin turning colors, blisters forming. It's a gruesome scene as the bacteria feast on your tissues, releasing toxins that can shut down your body. The worst part? This thing spreads fast. Even with medical attention, your chances of survival are slim. And if you do make it, you'll likely be left with scars that will forever remind you of this terrifying encounter. The only weapons against this monster are next-generation antibiotics, or in severe cases, amputation. But even then, the bacteria's toxins can leak into your bloodstream, causing sepsis and a 25% chance of death. So next time you see a doctor, make sure they know you're not messing around. Remember that awesome movie Outbreak with Dustin Hoffman? Well, Ebola is the real-life version of that terrifying virus. It's a sneaky little bug that hides in your body for five to ten days, waiting to unleash its horror. First, you get a fever, feel weak, and your stomach starts acting up. Sounds like the flu, right? But then things get really messed up. You start vomiting blood, your diarrhea turns into a bloody mess, and you might even bleed from your eyes, ears, and nose. It's like your body is trying to escape from the inside out, and that's just the beginning. Ebola is part of the hemorrhagic virus family, which includes Marburg virus, and hantavirus. These are some of the scariest diseases on Earth, with insanely high mortality rates of up to 90%. The good news is that the short incubation period usually keeps these viruses contained. People are usually too sick to travel before they even know they're infected. But imagine if Ebola hit a major city? That's a recipe for a global disaster. Since 1976, over 1,800 people have died from Ebola, and it's still lurking in Uganda, Kenya, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. In 2007, these countries saw outbreaks that killed 157 people. Not a huge number, but considering how deadly this virus is, it's enough to make you shiver. You know malaria, right? Well, dengue fever is its tropical cousin, hanging out in the same warm, humid regions. It's related to West Nile virus, viral encephalitis, and yellow fever. But with a twist, this little bugger loves cities. While most viruses have been kicked out of urban areas, dengue fever thrives in crowded cities, thanks to its trusty sidekick, the mosquito. These little bloodsuckers spread the virus like wildfire, making it a serious threat to millions. There's a vaccine, but it's not a magic bullet. The only treatment is managing the symptoms, which can be pretty brutal. Imagine a fever that won't quit vomiting, bloody diarrhea, and your blood count plummeting. It's like your body is slowly shutting down. Dengue fever burst onto the scene in the 1780s, causing simultaneous epidemics in North America, Africa, and Asia. It's been a recurring nightmare ever since, with global outbreaks happening every five to six years. And here's the scary part. The virus keeps mutating, making it even harder to control. No wonder it managed to kill over 6.5 million people in South and Southeast Asia within the last four years. Dengue is no joke. 
We all know flu season can be a drag, but imagine a flu that killed millions of people, especially young, healthy individuals. That was the Spanish flu, a pandemic that swept the globe from 1918 to 1920. The scariest thing about this flu was that it didn't discriminate. It wasn't just the elderly or those with weak immune systems that were at risk. In fact, healthy young people were more likely to die from this virus. It was like the flu had a vendetta against the strong. The Spanish flu, which actually originated in France and the USA, attacked the body's immune system. Stronger immune systems actually gave the virus more fuel to wreak havoc. This deadly combination killed an estimated 50 to 100 million people worldwide, making it one of the deadliest pandemics in history. But here's the creepy part. The Spanish flu hasn't gone extinct. It's still lurking out there, waiting for its chance to strike again. Every flu season, we hear about new strains and vaccines because the flu virus is constantly mutating. And if it mutates in the wrong way, we could be facing another Spanish flu pandemic. Think about bird flu, a recent variant of the Spanish flu that attempted to wipe us out in the early 2000s. While it hasn't caused a global pandemic like the classic Spanish flu, it's still a serious threat with a mortality rate of 62%. A deadly disease that wipes out 40% of a city's population in just a few months. That's the Black Death, a plague that ravaged Europe in the 14th century. It all started with the Plague of Justinian, which hit Constantinople in the 6th century. This nasty bug killed 10,000 people a day, wiping out a quarter of the eastern Mediterranean's population. Then, in the 14th century, the Black Death returned with a vengeance. It spread like wildfire across Europe turning bustling cities into ghost towns. Up to 50% of the population died in some areas. In total, the Black Death killed an estimated 137 million people, more than the entire population of Nigeria today. The Black Death was caused by a bacterium spread by infected fleas that lived on rats. The symptoms were gruesome, swollen black lymph nodes, fever, and agonizing pain. The good news is that the Black Death has been mostly eradicated in the West. We've managed to keep the rats at bay thanks to improved hygiene and sanitation. However, the bacteria still exist in parts of the world and can still cause outbreaks. HIV or AIDS is a disease that's touched every corner of the globe. It originated in sub-Saharan Africa in the mid-20th century and has since spread to every country on Earth. An estimated 33.2 million people are currently living with HIV, and over 25 million people have died from AIDS since 1981. HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, is spread through contact with infected bodily fluids, like blood or semen. The scary thing is that it can take up to 10 years for HIV to progress to AIDS, meaning people can be infected without knowing it, spreading the virus unknowingly. Once AIDS develops, without antiviral therapy, a person's life expectancy is only about nine months. What makes HIV or AIDS so terrifying is that the virus itself doesn't kill you directly. It weakens your immune system, making you vulnerable to other infections that can be deadly. It's like a stealthy army that takes over your body from the inside out. The good news is that there are treatments available to help people living with HIV or AIDS, but there's no cure yet. And the virus is still a major threat, especially in developing countries. So let us know in the comments which of these deadly diseases creeps you out the most. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also, press the bell icon for instant notifications so that you never miss a video from Factastic Trivia.